I've hiked around the Superstition Mountains my entire life. To me, it's home. This beautiful and rugged mountain range has over 150,000 acres of remote wilderness area. The Superstitions have a lot of history and legends, from the hidden gold of the Lost Dutchman, brutal massacres of Native Americans, and countless hikers dying or going missing in this unforgiving landscape. And I couldn't think of a better place to do my first ever solo backpacking trip. All right, we're out of the wind a little bit so I can talk to you guys here. Biggest challenge hiking in the desert obviously is gonna be water. I brought my, my three liter bottle here and then I have my Sawyer uh, water filtration and also have an extra platypus bag. It's like two, uh, two liters, I believe. So like I said, a little nervous. There's not gonna be water down in the canyon. Usually there is. Uh, it's been probably, I don't know, two or three weeks since it rained. Yeah, if not, this is gonna be a short trip, so. Oh, we got about three, three, four more miles to go before I get down to the area. I want to look for a camp spot for the first night. So we have now moved officially from nervous about the water to cautiously optimistic. There is water down there. Looks like it might be standing water, so I don't know what the condition of, the, of that water actually is. I also do have some purification tablets, so worst case scenario, I just don't want to have kind of explosive diarrhea from a bunch of standing water down there. But there is water, so right now we're going to stick with cautiously optimistic. Until we get a closer look, we are pretty much at the top of the hike as far as elevation goes. Uh, we're now heading down into the canyon where the water is, making our way to that big pointy rock back there. My first thought making this long steep descent was the fact that I had to come back up this at the end of my hike, which I was not looking forward to. We've made it down to the water. As you can see behind me here, we're officially able now to move from cautiously optimistic to relief. Nice clear water. Uh, this would be perfect for being able to filter with the Sawyer bottle that I have. We're good. All right, so we're, this is the first water crossing and we have two options. The trail splits here and goes off on the uh, west side of Battleship Mountain or going down the east side, which is Labarge Canyon. Uh, I don't think there's any places to camp in Labarge Canyon, so I'm going to stay on the west side of Battleship. Uh, we want to camp as close as we can to Battleship Mountain Trailhead, which is up on a saddle overlooking both Labarge Canyon down below and then Boulder Canyon uh, down below to the west of us. So, all right, we push on. I made my way through these mountains that I'd only ever seen from a distance. Seeing them from this perspective inside the canyons gave me a whole new appreciation for how special this place really is. As I traveled down the trail, I came across the place that's referred to as the Indian Paint Mine. It gets its name from the deep red in these rocks.
Well, I fill up my water, <laughs> like I fill up my gas really in my truck. Like it drops below half, time to fill up, that's it. I tell my wife all the time, she just laughs. Like if it gets below half a tank, it might as well be empty. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill up now. So I do the same thing with my water. So I just filled up for the first time using my Sawyer uh, filter system, a uh, filter bottle. And uh, now I'm gonna head up. We got a little ways to go walking down this creek. It's been literally like 45 minutes of you know, just rock hopping and brush busting down this, this creek bed here. You can't even really see the, uh, the trail. I have all trails um, downloaded uh, offline. So I have the pro version, I think it's like 30 bucks a year. So I'm having to look at that every once in a while and make sure I'm still on the trail. Uh, a couple more miles to go before I get to my area that I wanna camp. So uh, it's getting close to lunchtime. I'm gonna try and get to my spot before lunch and get set up, have some lunch. All right, I think we're about to make our ascent up here. I'm gonna be camped somewhere up on this saddle behind me here. So I don't think I'm gonna have any water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill up here. I have my platypus bag that's two liters. I'm gonna fill that up and we're heading up to camp. All right, we've made it to the saddle. I found my camp spot. I think it's gonna be right back over here. And just walking up from the bottom of that canyon up here to the saddle, I, I drink almost all of my water there, over half. Man, that was rough. Like I didn't even wanna film walking. That was, uh, that was brutal. That one got me good. So this little spot right here, Looks nice and flat, no big rocks. I can clear a lot of this out. Set up camp, it's a little off the trail. There's a, a big Palo Verde tree here that's kind of blocking the trail so people can't just like walk right next to the tent. Yeah, got a nice view of Weaver's Needle back here. And then we got Battleship Mountain over here. This is probably what I'm gonna try and hike up for sunset or something, so. All right, time to set up camp, but first walk around and then I'm gonna make some lunch. Alright guys, while I'm waiting for my lasagna to cook, I want to tell you about today's sponsor of this video and it is a company called Seedin, an amazing carbon neutral clothing company that has done something that I think is really amazing. All of their material, fabric and packaging are made from recycled sources to limit their environmental footprint. Their recycled polyester from post-consumer water bottles, the recycled nylon from discarded fishing nets, 
tensile fibers from renewable wood sources. And my personal favorite, high quality merino wool like this shirt right here, which is actually made from ecologically regenerative farming in New Zealand. Even their packaging is biodegradable and water soluble. When they sent me out this shirt, these are the softest, most comfortable shirts I have ever worn in my life. If you just use the link down in the description, as well as the discount code Mike Perea Photography at the checkout. And once again, thank you so much Seedin for sponsoring this video. After relaxing in my glorious backpacking chair for a few hours, I decided to tackle Battleship Mountain for sunset. But it didn't quite go as planned. Well, <laughs> I don't think I'm going the right way. I think I should have climbed up at some point. I'm like literally on a ledge here. And this way, I just, <laughs> no, I don't think this is it. So I'm gonna have to backtrack a little bit and uh, see where I need to go up at. It's. Definitely not this way. Well, I don't know, all trails are saying that that's uh, the right way, but man, that looks sketchy. Me being out here, there is nobody else out here. I've seen you know, one group come across where I was camping early on when I first got there. Other than that, there's been nobody out here. So me trying that right now is probably not the best idea. Uh, if that fall off the rock face in the cliff doesn't kill me, uh, my wife definitely would so I'm gonna hold off on that right now until maybe one day I can come out here with uh, one of my buddies that have been out here before but for now because I don't want to be doing that in sunset I don't want to be walking back in the dark especially so I've come out here to a very nice overlook got the camera here got weaver's needle back here I got some really nice dramatic mountains here to shoot here for sunset hopefully these clouds stick around get a nice colorful sunset and then uh, back to camp for the night Being up here by myself is, uh, it's absolutely amazing. Like the experience itself is, is, is amazing. All you hear is just literally it's the wind and that is it. You know, no phones, no, <laughs> no news, no anything like that. So it's, it's nice, but it's also a little bit bittersweet uh, just because I, I like spending, uh, you know, uh, the, using these outdoor experiences and, and, and spending time with Chris doing that kind of stuff and sharing that with her. Uh, but she has zero desire to, <laughs> To do backpacking at all she's like i told her this year i wanted to do more backpacking trips and she's like yeah you go right ahead uh she wants nothing to do with it so uh like i said it is nice being out here i mean just the solitude is you know back here in this wilderness area you know there's no roads anywhere near here i've uh hiked about seven and a half miles today you know just seeing a few other people and right now there's nobody out here you know there's nobody backpacking that i've seen there's no camps other than mine and a couple of hikers earlier today and that was it. So it's, uh, man, is it peaceful out here. A little bit terrifying too, like if anything was to happen back here, sprained ankle or knee or, or anything, you would be in a world of trouble. Uh, and it's, you know, it's a pretty hard hike. You know, it's rated as hard on, on all trails. Just desert hiking in general is pretty tough. You know, there's a lot of elevation gain. I think there's something like, uh, over 2,000 feet of elevation gain. Yeah, just being out here by yourself, it's 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 risky for sure, but it's it's rewarding, man. It's it's like I said, being out here and being the only one out here, seeing this view here is is absolutely crazy.
All right, guys, well, back at camp. It's time to uh, get ready for bed. It's about six o'clock, so <laughs> it is pretty early, but uh, I'm gonna get in bed right now and ready to get up a little bit early. I can never sleep when I'm out backpacking. It's, uh, you know, have these uh, air mattresses and stuff. It's, it's not uh, the most comfortable, but maybe this new Nemo Tensor sleeping pad is gonna help and my new pillow. So I'm gonna jump in the tent now and I will see you guys in the morning. Well, good morning, everybody. It was <laughs> it was a very very rough night. It was so windy and loud. My whole tent was shaking. I thought there's a few times where just these huge gusts of wind would come up. I thought it was gonna take my entire tent and throw it down the canyon. Oh man! But uh, I feel like I got a little bit of rest. I don't know. Around 3 a.m., I saw there was a some there was an owl that was right. I think it might have been in this tree right here. And there was a couple of them down in the canyon. They were calling to each other and that happened for about an hour or two. So I'd say I probably got a good three hours of sleep, maybe not uninterrupted, but maybe three hours total throughout the night. Uh, I feel pretty good. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pack up here. I've already started packing up a little bit. I'm gonna head down into the Labarge pool, uh, get some water down there, have some breakfast and then start making my way out. Uh, from what I understand, this way that I'm going is uh, completing the loop. It's a little bit shorter heading back, but there's some more boulder hopping and stuff like that because I'm in a, in a creek, so yeah, another adventure guys today and uh, we're heading out. So let's get down to that Labarge pool, get some water and get some breakfast. We have made it to the Labarge, Labarge pool and I've decided that's how you pronounce it just because we need to be obnoxious about it so <laughs> Labarge pool I don't know why I mean it's a pretty big pool it's not much bigger than some of the other ones I'm not sure why this one's named either way huge slot canyon up here I mean look at these cliffs man absolutely beautiful wow and I think you can hike back in there's even a little waterfall over there um, yeah, I'm gonna make something to eat real quick. I may just have my snacks instead of bringing all the cooking stuff. Just get my cliff bar, my apple, and some jerky, and then start heading out. But I wanna walk up here a little ways. Refill up my water, of course. I thought about drinking some coffee, but probably not the best idea this morning. <laughs> that dried food yesterday already got me pretty good, so I need to uh, chill out on the instant coffee. So maybe I'll wait till I get back up to the truck. Probably got about a five and a half mile hike here, so I'm gonna get something to eat explore the pools a little bit, and then we are on our way back. Uh, I found a photo. So I'm here in this pool, and I have this beautiful pointy mountain in the background here. So let me show you guys. So right there, got that nice little rock in the foreground. Got the pointy guy in the background there. It's a blue sky, so I don't care about the sky too much. And there we go, got the nice light up there on the peaks there coming through from the sunrise. Man, that was a, uh, that was a nice surprise there seeing that. What a beautiful mountain. So I was camped right up in this saddle here. So I couldn't really tell from this side what this mountain looked like, but looking from here, man, it's got that beautiful triangle shape. There's two of them actually big rock wall got a nice puddle here some a little bit of reflection uh, man this is nice I might throw in a filter real fast too and smooth out this water do a long exposure so yeah let me do that all right so that was pretty cool I ended up throwing it on my uh, ND filter and my six stop give me like a 30 second shutter speed so I can smooth out that water I can see underneath cutting that glare and uh, man what a cool find uh, last morning on the way out and just Happened to turn around and see that mountain. I wasn't even looking back there. Awesome. 
All right, now the, I just I reached my bag and I was throwing stuff out to get to my camera and filters. So gotta stuff everything back in again and uh, continue on our way.